My name is Dai Guangcui from China's State Forestry Administration. The history of deforestation in China goes back many centuries, but we have turned around in the past twenty years. Today, I will tell you how China went from a country famous for deforestation to a country famous for forest recovery. Up until the late twentieth century, China's growing population required more and more agricultural land, until even dry lands and mountains were cleared to grow enough rice and wheat to feed the people. In the year two thousand two, a survey found that sixty seven thousand hectares of farmland each year were lost to erosion. Deforestation has also caused major floods. In nineteen ninety eight, floods killed thousands of people and displaced over thirteen million. After this. Disasters. We invested in six national key forest programs for to conserve natural forests and restore millions of hectares of land through natural regeneration and tree planting. But a lot of the most fragile land that we needed to restore was farmland. Millions of farmers living in hilly landscapes and upper watersheds were going to need to grow less grain and plant more trees. In nineteen ninety nine, we launched the conversion of cropland to forest program, which pays farmers to grow trees on hillside farmland and gives them. Unused poor lands to restore, along with seventy-year forest tenure certificates. Local forest departments provided seedlings and training to farmers, all together almost thirty million hectares, and the area of Arizona has been allocated as forest and planted with trees. The area that needed attention was so big that by 2013, we had 32 million families enrolled in the program, or about 124 million people. That's about nine percent of China's population, a lot of people. But of course, farmers need land to grow food. So we provided grain to them, but the grain was hard to deliver. So in the year two thousand four, we replaced grain with cash, transferred directly into farmers' bank accounts. Obviously, this has required a huge investment. You know, the government has spent about. Sixty-seven billion U.S. dollar on the CCRP, seventy percent of which has gone to farmers. This is how the farmers receive their compensation payments. Of course, China is a big country, and conditions vary from place to place, even within villages. So we needed to implement different practice from place to place. More subsidy are paid for ecological forest because people growing economic trees such as fruit or nut trees and bamboo can earn money from the forest after some time. The steepest and most ecologically sensitive. Places are closed off to allow natural regrowth. How has program been working? Overall, 
The CCRP has increased China's forest cover by three percent, and a study have shown that the area damaged by natural disasters has decreased since the floods of ninety eight. Although the area of cropland has been reduced, the productivity of the land has increased, and people are also using less fair wood. Since the beginning, we've been monitoring social economic impacts in one hundred counties around the country, and in those counties, poverty has decreased. So people's welfare has been largely protected or improved due to the program. A few challenges still need attention. One is to improve forest quality and biodiversity of CCRP forests, which is now one focus for future efforts. Another challenge is that subsidies will not continue forever. We need ways to support the transition to new economic opportunities, from markets for forest products and ecosystem services like carbon or water or new jobs. This picture is the caricature of dream. Written in seedlings on a dry hillside. Thank you for you letting me tell you about China's recent experiences in forest landscape restoration. We hope our lessons will be useful not only to China but to other countries implementing forest landscape restoration. Mahalo.